Hey guys, this is Justin at The Survivor Review, and in me and Sam's previous Halloween video, we discussed the classic White Zombie. And at the end, I briefly brought up the sequel and quickly dismissed it, and I kind of felt bad doing that, seeing that I hadn't properly seen the film. I watched it many years ago, and like I said in the video, I fell asleep during it. So I kind of felt bad just kind of like quickly being like, oh yeah, it's crap, don't watch it. So I figured I'd give it a watch. So today I'm going to be talking about... Revolts of the Zombies. And to answer Sam's question... Does it have that Victor Halperin touch? No. No, it does not. It's shocking that this movie was directed by Victor Halperin, who directed White Zombie, because it feels nothing like it. There's no more atmosphere, or creepy imagery, or creative camera work, or cool effects. None of that. This movie's just very dull, boring, flat with no atmosphere whatsoever. It's like the exact opposite of White Zombie. And it's not really a sequel. It's really not connected. This doesn't continue a storyline from that movie or anything. It's only really connected in name only. In fact, from what I read online, there was actually like a lawsuit between the studio that released White Zombie saying this movie couldn't actively promote itself as a sequel. Which is fine because, like I said, it really is loosely connected. It's the loosest of sequels. There's only really two things that connect it to White Zombie. One, the fact that there's zombies in it. But even then, they execute it very differently, which I'll get into that. And two, the fact that that shot of Bela Lugosi's eyes from White Zombie, his introductory shots, that amazing moment where it's like the close-up of his eyes, and then it zooms out and the eyes move onto his body, that awesome shot... That close-up of his eyes is seen throughout the movie. It's there every time, like, someone gets put under a trance and turned into a zombie. You, those eyes kind of get superimposed over the shots. And yeah, that's the connections to White Zombie. Aside from that, it's like a totally separate movie, totally separate story. So it's kind of a good thing, because you really could just easily ignore this movie, because it really is so loosely connected. So I'll try to get into the plot of this movie. The plot is kind of the positive thing about it in that it has really interesting ideas. It's all executed terribly, but there's some really fun ideas I could have made for a really entertaining, like, B-horror film from the 1930s, because this film came out in 1936. And there's ideas here that could have been fun and unique. So the movie actually takes place in World War I, and you have this voodoo priest who's actually offering to make zombies for the army to fight the war for them. And you get the one cool scene in the movie where you got this group of zombified soldiers like slowly making their way across the front lines to the opposing side. And the opposing side is just shooting at them, it's not doing anything, and the zombies are able to kill them. It's a sequence that, like, if this was the entire movie, That'd be great, but could you imagine that? Zombified soldiers in World War I? How is that not an entertaining idea for a movie? But that's just the first few minutes. Because basically the army doesn't believe the voodoo priest, so he zombifies the soldiers as an example. And once they see that, they go, okay, this is some dangerous stuff. We don't want to get into this. Let's arrest the, the voodoo priest, get him out of here. And before that can happen, the voodoo priest gets murdered. And now everyone's freaking out because they think, oh, this is the opposing side did this. Now they have the secret to the zombies. Now they're going to have zombie soldiers. We have to stop this. So they go to Angkor, where the voodoo priest is from, so they can destroy the secret of the zombies. And so the rest of the movie is just this expedition with these main characters trying to figure this stuff out. And it's just dull as hell. There's a love triangle? Most of this movie is about a love triangle between our main character, who loves this woman, and the woman actually loves our main character's best friend. And our main character at one point proposes to her, she accepts, but then it turns out that she actually loves the other guy, so she ends up calling the whole thing off, and that's like the middle section of the movie. And then the movie takes an interesting turn. This is the one other interesting thing with the plot of the film that's unique, is that our main character turns out to be the villain. Because, after being dumped by the love of his life, he ends up finding the secrets to creating the zombies. So he ends up just creating all these, like, zombies to do all this stuff for him. 
and basically he's the bad guy at the end and that's a really unique thing a really unique kind of like turn that you really wouldn't see in like a 30s film i feel like a lot of the like old school 30 30s films would just play it safe like you have our hero he has to stop the bad guy but in this one like he's our hero who literally like when his fiance breaks up the wedding and is just like i thought you'd be mad at me and he's just like no i still love you that guy becomes the villain of the movie <laughs> And I'm like, okay, that's kind of unique. It's pretty cool. Doesn't help that I don't care about the character or any of the characters. So it really, in the long run, doesn't mean anything. But I'm like, eh, that's intriguing. And yeah, that's some real interesting stuff, like, with the plot of the film. And like I mentioned earlier, this movie is very flat. It's very just scenes of people talking. And that's the thing, you compare that to White Zombie, and there's so much great imagery and camera work and unique shot compositions. And there's none of that in this movie. It feels like a movie that they just made super quickly. And the story is so unevenly paced. And that so scenes drag. But then other stuff happens too quickly. Like, you have a scene between our main guy and the girl. I keep saying that because I, I don't remember their names. And I'm not going to be bothered to look them up. So, you, you have a scene between them. The next scene is like a dinner after he had already proposed. And they're celebrating that they're going to be married. And then you have this next scene where this accident happens. And the girl runs into the arms of the friend. And then the next scene, she's calling off the marriage. That, that, that whole stuff is happening super fast, but then everything else in the movie just drags. And it's, it's a dull movie. I totally see why I fell asleep watching it the first time, because it's just very boring. Every scene just kind of drags on. And then also adding to the fact that I feel like this movie was made pretty quickly, it also feels really cheap. And I know we mentioned that White Zombie was definitely a lower budgeted film, and this feels like even lower than that. And because of the fact that, like I said, it's just people sitting around talking, but there are moments in the movie where there's just a lot of obvious kind of like rear screen projection. Like that sequence with the zombie soldiers would have been a lot cooler if they actually had like a whole location, if they actually had like a whole set and you can do like these cool shots of it, but it's clearly just the actors against like a rear screen projection of a, of a war zone. And it just kind of feels cheap. And then the most like ridiculous, silliest looking effect ever is that our main hero is following this character. And he's following this character through a creek. And it's all fine and good until it cuts to like close-up shots. And the actors are clearly just walking in front of a screen. Like they're not there. One, it just looks silly. But two, half the stuff, the shots don't line up. Like you have the tree branches in the foreground that are like out of focus. And they move past the actors and they're still out of focus while the actors are just, you know, perfectly in focus. Like, Nothing lines up, it doesn't work, and it looks super cheap and very silly. And then that brings us to the zombies. The zombies in this movie aren't really zombies. They're not reanimated corpses. They're, there's none of that. Essentially, zombies in this movie is just people being hypnotized. In White Zombie, the zombies in that movie are just these weird, kind of, they almost feel like otherworldly beings. And even when you have the main character, Beaumont, when he gets slowly turned into a zombie, slowly just kind of like losing like all of his senses and everything, and just basically kind of like dying inside. And that's all really cool. And then in this movie, like our main guy, he fight, figures out the formula to whatever it is. And then afterwards, all he has to do is just kind of like stare. And I guess he just thinks about who he wants to like turn to a zombie. And then that person like just comes under his spell and does his bidding. That's it. It's like, they're not really zombies. It's such a, like, a lame excuse for zombies. You know what I mean? And it just doesn't work. And it, again, just adds to kind of the cheap, kind of like, almost laziness feel that this movie has. This movie feels really lazy. And it, it's comparing that to White Zombie, it's just, it's night and day, man. Also, the movie has this one character I haven't mentioned yet. He's the guy that does end up killing the voodoo priest earlier on. He's a very typical cliche 1930s movie villain. And that's fine, I got no problem with that. He seems like the character that, like, 
that Bela Lugosi would have played. <laughs> you know what I mean? He has that very kind of like smarmy, you know, mustache twirly villain thing to him. And so he kills the the priest and he, to find to you know to get the secret for himself. And that's all well and good. And then that has no payoff. He ends up confronting our main guy. The main guy finds out that he killed the other guy. And you're like, okay, interesting. And then he just has a zombie kill him. And then we move on. What was the point? What was the point of all of that? I don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. The movie just lacks horror. And even when you get to the ending, where our main character releases all the zombies from his trance, and they all revolt against him, it's just a bunch of people going after a guy. It just kind of... It doesn't have a horror feel to it, it just lacks that. There's a reason nobody really talks about this movie, but White Zombie is considered an all-time great. There's a reason why this is a forgotten film that you'll just find on, you know, your typical cheesy 50 horror movie packs, because it's in the public domain, as well as White Zombie, but White Zombie is going to get a Blu-ray release. Whereas this will probably stay in those 50 movie packs for years to come, because that's where it belongs. So that's Revolt of the Zombies. I don't really recommend it. I mean, maybe if you're curious after seeing White Zombie and you're just curious to see, like, some of the director's other work and see a kind of follow-up to it. But, yeah, I don't know. I don't really recommend it. You know, there's nothing really there. Like, I feel like even, I feel like even if, like, people don't like White Zombie, there's still some qualities to it that make it worth watching. Like, if you think the movie is hokey and that kind of stuff, there's still some, you know, good atmosphere to it, you know? And this movie doesn't really even have that. It's just hokey and boring. And it doesn't quite work. And yeah, that's all I have to say for that. So until next time, I'll talk to you guys later.